Hi and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Dr. Tolu and in this video I'm going to be talking about five things that you should know about hormonal acne. So if you like what I have to say please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button and leave a comment for me letting me know if you found this video useful. If you have a topic that you would like me to discuss sometime in the future you can also leave it as a comment and I will do my best to get to it as soon as I can. Alright guys without further ado let's get straight to it. So the first thing that we'll be looking at today is what is hormonal acne? Acne is a condition that affects the skin and acne is very common. Acne affects about 650 million people worldwide. Hormonal acne, like the name suggests, is acne that has a hormonal component to it because apart from that, there's another type of acne, for instance, fungal acne, that is usually due to an overgrowth of um, yeast. But hormonal acne, has to do with breakouts which are usually due to a change in the hormone balance of a person and that change is usually an increase in androgen levels like testosterone for instance so when there is that increase in testosterone levels that can cause a form of hormonal change and that change can lead to the breakouts that we call hormonal acne So the second thing we are going to be looking at today is what causes hormonal acne. Hormonal acne are breakouts that occur due to hormonal changes. When something happens to cause a change in hormone balance, for instance, you know when your skin gets really oily, especially for those who have the oily type of skin and then it's glistening and then maybe you have to clean up a bit. That oily substance on your skin is what is known as sebum. So when there's an increase, in androgen levels like testosterone levels that can lead to an overproduction of sebum and this sebum then interacts with the bacteria that's already present on our skin because all of us have bacteria present just sitting there on our skin no matter how much you have your back sebum interacts with this bacteria and what may then happen is that they may end up clogging your pores and when they clog the pores, the mixture of the sebum and the bacteria clogging your pores may then lead to this breakout that we know as hormonal acne. The third thing we're going to be looking at today are the risk factors for hormonal acne. What that means is some of the things that may be present in family or in your genes or in your lifestyle that can increase your risk of you having hormonal acne. So the first thing we're going to start with are the factors that are preventable. Many of you may notice that when you are particularly under a lot of duress or stress and maybe you are not getting enough sleep, during that time, especially in women, that can lead to hormonal changes and this in turn can increase your risk of having hormonal acne. We also have to talk about the kinds of skin products that you use. You can broadly divide skin products into two broad types. You have the comedogenic and the non-comedogenic. So the comedogenic are the ones that have oily ingredients which can increase your risk of developing hormonal acne. So those who use comedogenic products or acnegenic products have a higher risk of developing hormonal acne. Make sure that you are going for non-comedogenic or non-acnegenic skin products because that can make a huge difference in your case. Also, a couple of medications can also increase your risk of developing hormonal acne. For instance, if you are on steroid medication or if you are on a mood stabilizer like lithium for your mental health, or for those who may be on hormonal birth control pills, these are medications that can increase your risk of developing hormonal acne. Now, there are a couple of factors that you may not be able to do much about. For instance, those who may have a family history of acne, you know that your first degree relatives like maybe your dad or your mom had a serious case of hormonal acne and then his father or her father or mother then that increases your risk of developing hormonal acne considerably also women in particular you have hormonal changes at different points in times in your life for instance even just going through your cycle each month many of you may notice that you tend to develop acne just before or during your periods 
that is normal and many of you may even notice that you have irregular periods and that underlying condition causing the irregular periods may also predispose you to developing hormonal acne. Women who are perimenopausal or menopausal, the same thing. And last but not least, medical conditions like polycystic ovarian syndrome, PCOS, or even many ovarian or metabolic conditions that may affect women or even men, because men can also develop hormonal acne. Any medical condition that can affect your hormone balance can increase your risk of developing hormonal acne. And that brings me to the fourth point. What are the symptoms of hormonal acne? What are the things that you see that may make you think, oh, you have hormonal acne? Under the symptoms, I'm going to be talking about different types of hormonal acne, the manifestations of hormonal acne. So the first one we are going to be looking at are what we call comedonies. Comedonies are of two types. You have white heads and you have black heads. So comedonies occur when the skin pores are clogged. And you know I said earlier that this clogging of skin pores may occur when sebum interacts with bacteria on your skin and then it goes into your pores. Those are the places where your hair follicles are. So when you have your skin, you have the parts where hair comes out from those pores in there if they are clogged that's what leads to hormonal acne so comedonies the first symptom of hormonal acne is made up of white heads and black heads which occur due to clogged pores the second symptom of hormonal acne are papules these are small bumps in your skin about two to five millimeters in diameter and they don't contain pus so many of you may have noticed that you may have papules just on your skin but when you press it there's no pus inside those are papules then you also have pustules which are also bumps but they have pus in them the pus may be white or yellow whatever the color so that's the difference between pustules and papules. The individual with hormonal acne may also develop nodules. Now nodules are larger than all the rest we've looked at. They are large, they are firm and they are painful and they are also lodged under the skin. Now when these nodules have pus in them and they are deeply lodged under the skin, that's when we call them cysts. Now cysts or cystic acne is probably the most severe form of hormonal acne that anybody can have and they can be a bit tricky to treat and we're going to look at the treatment of all these forms later on in the video now the fifth thing we're going to be looking at which is probably the part that is of most interest to everybody watching this video is how can i treat hormonal acne hormonal acne like we've examined can come with different kinds of symptoms you know we've looked at the nodules cysts and the likes but then when we talk about the treatment of hormonal acne first of all we need to talk about some things you can do from the comfort of your home which can help if you have hormonal acne the first thing that i would like to say is to stop over exfoliating or over washing or squeezing your skin especially at the point where you have the acne i know that it may feel like you being aggressive maybe i'm trying to over exfoliate would help because maybe the acne is aggressive so you are thinking of matching it with an aggressive form but that sometimes can be counterproductive and it may not be helpful in the long run also remember to wash your face twice daily with a mild cleanser eat healthy because what you take in can also affect the appearance of your skin sleep manage stress properly these are simple steps that you can take to help with the treatment of hormonal acne Now that we've talked about this, I'm going to talk about the treatment for the different types. And here's what I mean. We can also divide hormonal acne into three broad types, into mild, moderate, and severe cases of hormonal acne. In mild cases of hormonal acne, it's usually just made up of comedonies, whiteheads, blackheads, and less than half of the face is affected. Treating mild cases of hormonal acne may require using over-the-counter medication that you don't need a prescription for like benzoyl peroxide in moderate acne apart from the appearance of comedonies half of the person's face is usually affected and it may even affect other parts of the body there's usually tenderness and soreness in the acne that means the acne the person has may feel tender may feel sore may feel a bit painful that's moderate acne this may require a more robust form of treatment than mild acne. When we talk about severe acne, the entire face is covered with comedonies, with papules, pustules. There may also be nodules, cysts, 
and then scarring as well on the face. If you see someone with severe acne, you cannot miss it. You would know that this acne is much more severe than what you normally see or what you usually see. For the treatment of moderate and severe forms of acne, we prescribe antibiotics and you may need to use the antibiotics for a prolonged period of time, sometimes for up to a few months. Antibiotics like tetracycline, monocycline, erythromycin may be prescribed for moderate to severe acne. For women who may not respond properly to antibiotics, other forms of treatment like anti-androgen hormone therapy or maybe the use of birth control medication may also come into play to also help with hormonal acne. Antibiotics or anti-androgen therapy may then be combined with a drug called isotretinoin. Isotretinoin belongs to the retinoid family which is like a derivative of vitamin A and is quite good for the skin. So isotretinoin even though it is used especially in women with moderate or severe cases of acne it's not used in all women. So for instance women who are trying to conceive or women who are pregnant we absolutely do not give isotretinoin to such women because it may affect the baby. So while mild acne may just be treated with over-the-counter medication, moderate and severe cases are usually treated with a combination of antibiotics and isotretinoin. And in those who don't respond to oral antibiotics, that anti-androgen, um, hormone therapy and birth control medication may be used as well. And last but not least, the most severe form of acne, which is cystic acne, which I talked about when I was talking about um, the symptoms of hormonal acne, can be treated with a steroid injection called intralesional triamcinolone. When we talk about treatment for moderate to severe acne, those are usually carried out by a skin specialist, be it a dermatologist or someone who is certified to treat such conditions. Because many of the medications that you need to treat moderate and severe cases of acne, you may not just find them over the counter. They require a prescription, they require proper monitoring, and you may even need to run some tests and have a clinical history done to know if you can receive these forms of treatment because like i mentioned earlier not everybody may qualify to receive these forms of treatment so guys that has been an interesting video in my opinion on five things that you should know about hormonal acne so if you like what i have to say please hit the like button hit the subscribe button and leave a comment for me telling me if you found this video useful and if you have something you'd like me to discuss in the future also leave it as a comment for me and i'll do my best to get to it bye